Apple Pay, PayPal, PayPal, credit card, debit card, cash, coins, crypto, Samsung Pay, Fitbit Pay, Zip Pay, you name it. There is just a thousand ways on how we pay for things. And today's episode, that's what we're going to be covering. Welcome to another episode of My Two Cents. I'm your host, Ross Moran, and in today's episode, we're talking about how on earth we pay for things. So, as explained in the introduction, there are a thousand different ways that we pay for things nowadays. It started off with us paying for things, I assume, back in the day through the barter system, I guess, just trading hay and seeds and bread and I, I'm not, I don't know but I'm sure that's how it would have started we moved in obviously when people at my age were growing up we had coins and cash we'd, we'd go to the store and buy things with coins and cash we'd, if we had a part-time job that's how we got paid nowadays we slowly started to move into debit cards and credit cards and now we're going into PayPass and PayPal and it's crazy to think um, how you actually pay for things and it sounds like a strange question like how or how do you how do you how do you pay for things like what do you how do you pay for groceries and it's not when you not until you stop and really think about it that it's, it's you realize how far we've actually come and how different things are now that we've got all these these different tools I guess and all these different methods on, on paying for things so what got me thinking about this and why I wanted to do um, or why I wanted to talk about this on, on the episode was I um, Went out for lunch on the weekend, and usually when you go out for lunch with a big group of people, we all feel the same way. We have that, that issue at the end when you get, you get to pay the bill, and there's a group of 20 or 30 people, and you get to the, get to the counter, and the waiter walks over and says, I'm sorry, we don't split bills, there's only one bill per table, and then just trying to work out who pays for what, do you split it between everyone that was there, and there's always that one person that says, no, I only had entree, I only had garlic bread, I didn't have any mains and then it just becomes a fight and there's usually someone that misses out and it, it ends up just an absolute disaster. Anyway, this in this case we went, went out for lunch, there was 20 or 30 people and we all sat down, we got given a menu and then they left what I, I guess the best way to describe it was an iPad, left about four or five iPads on the table and slowly everyone kind of picked it up and a few people had been there before so they knew what it was but it was the first time I'd seen it and it was an iPad that had a Stripe, little Stripe pay pass portal on the back of it and what this let you do was to, you could order your drinks on and pay for them straight away so you would choose a drink you'd want, put your name in it and then hit checkout just like if you were using a shopping cart online and pay past your car your card and the waiter or waitress would bring over your drink when it was ready and this is the first time i'd seen it and i thought this is that was quite amazing and it kind of brought up a lot of conversations at the table about whether it's a good thing it's a bad thing on on how people are using it and if we're ahead of the times if we're behind the times and, and where we kind of sit on that scale of things and it was just a really interesting kind of dynamic because everyone was kind of we were discussing about we were talking about it and it was just one of those things that I guess you don't really think about too often you use you just pull out your money or just pay on your credit card I guess and you're on your way you don't really think about it too much what really got me thinking about it was when people were talking about the pros and cons of both and whether or not they think it's a good thing because it's just so easy which it is but um, then there's, some people brought up the idea that well it's a bit dangerous because you don't really think about handing over the money so that's why I wanted to do this episode and just talk about the pros and cons in terms of using all these awesome pay, pay systems and these tools and, and how you actually navigate your way around it and how you decide what's the best fit for you and, and what's some things you need to look out for. So I'm going to skip talking about any afterpay or zip pay functionalities in this episode because that's a whole other kettle of fish and I can de um, designate an entire episode to talk about those those ways, all those payment systems, because it's that's quite scary how how those work and how easy those can be to to spend money online. So we'll take that out of the, the equation today. But what I want to talk about was PayPass, um, PayWave, um, Apple Pay, Fitbit Pay, those types of things. So I've recently installed Apple Pay on my on my iPhone. I've been reluctant to use Apple Pay, um, just. I guess not knowing how it worked and didn't really take too much time to figure it out and then I got an email from my bank the other day saying that they are now you know able to use our card on, on Apple Pay or the Apple Wallet so I decided to install it 
and I thought I'd give it a go. So it's been about two weeks of using it now and to be honest, it's been unreal. It's been so easy that not having to carry around a wallet and a phone. You just take your phone, fingerprint, scan it and you're on your way. So I haven't ran into any places that don't take it yet or don't, don't accept it. I guess it's probably much the same as cash and card. Also just led, led to another discussion because I was telling someone about it that, that I've been using it and they were kind of quizzing me on it whether I think it's a good idea or whether I think it's a bad idea from obviously from a financial perspective, financial planning perspective and, and kind of what I see. So starting with the pros of, of these kind of payment functionalities is of course the first one is just ease of use. It's just so easy to pull out your phone or just to pull out your card and just tap and go and not have to worry about entering the, your pin in, not having to hold up people behind you in the line and it just makes life a lot easier. So it's just tap and go, it's just a breeze and you don't really have to worry about it. When you're out and about and you've got, especially if you've got Apple Pay, which I found on the weekend, I just took my phone, I didn't need my wallet and I could do everything on it. I could pay for lunch, I could pay for drinks and then I need to get an Uber home and I could just book my Uber on my phone and it was just unreal to be able to pay for everything. So obviously my Uber was linked up to my PayPal account. So that's obviously just another another way of, of paying for things. To cover off on a few of the, I guess the bad things, which I don't think there's too many, but we'll cover off a few anyway. The security of your personal details, security of your bank account, credit card, that type of thing. Obviously we, we're dealing with sensitive information. And I guess that was probably one of my concerns before I signed up for Apple Pay and having everything on my phone was the fact that you have everything on your phone. So if you lose your phone, it's you're kind of up the creek. And whereas you've got your wallet, you've got your phone, so I go, well, I've got my wallet, I've got, got some money, I've lost my phone, so I could still get a cab home or still, I guess, get the bus home or whatever, however you travel. And that was probably my, my one main concern was just the security of, of your details. But I think that's going to be a thing of the past. I'm not sure. I'm not up, up to date with the tech and, and how things work from that perspective. So please, if you are, let me, let me know of any, any concerns that you see in, in the tech world. But I think with the fact that to use Apple Pay, I have to fingerprint my phone before it pays. With the new iPhones, it's all facial recognition. Um, so it is a downside, the security element, because it's just that unknown on, on on where we sit and how things get, how data gets transferred and you hear the, the stories of people walking through shopping malls with card readers um, or little ATM machines and swiping past your phone or swiping past your card. So that's, that's obviously a downside and that's one thing you need to be, be wary of. Um, but I think that's going to be a thing of the past, I'm not sure. But the next thing, which is a downside, um, again sort of but from a financial planning perspective and what I see on a day-to-day -day basis and this is actually something that I think was the general consensus of the table at, at lunch when we were discussing this was that ease of use of being able to just tap and go and not have to worry about pulling out cash or pulling out your card um, and paying for things so you're not physically handing over the cash you're not seeing that hundred dollar note get broken down into 20s or 50s so it's not that physical pain of that exchange anymore so from why i think that's a bad thing is that it's if you're not good at managing your money it's just so easy to get in the habit of just pay pass pay pass not worry about it wake up on sunday morning with a hangover check your bank account and you've spent hundred dollars or hundred twenty dollars on espresso martinis but you at the time obviously alcohol paid it plays a factor in that but you just didn't have to think about it you just hand over your card or hand over your phone and just pay paypals it pay passes it however you do it maybe on your fitbit fitbit or your apple watch i guess but you're not having to worry about it it's just that i guess the psychology side of things that you're not really um having to care about it right then it's just deal with it deal with it tomorrow so if you aren't good with your money then it's it is a concern for me that how easy it is to just overspend and not and not worry about it and just obviously blow blow your budget so in summary there's good things there's bad things i'm a big fan of of this new technology it excites me but also scares me a little bit in terms of where where we're going to be going in the future with with all these technologies and i don't think it's going to be too long before we don't even have to pay for things on our phone i guess we'll just have a microchip in our, our wrist or something and just pay pay wave that way 
find what works for you. If you like paying with cash, going to the ATM, withdrawing cash and going to the shops that way, if that's the best way for you and that's the best way to manage your money, which is something I recommend for people doing if they're terrible with managing their money, get cash out. If that works for you, if you can manage on a credit card and use a credit card and swipe and pay the balance at the end of the month, PayPal, um, PayPass, whatever, whatever way works for you, whatever's gonna help you manage your money the best, then find, find the way that works, works for you and stick to that. Just as always, don't overspend. And as a rule of thumb, if you haven't got enough money in your bank account to buy something, then obviously means you can't afford it. So it's probably best that you, you put that back and, and wait till next week, wait till next payday to, to be able to afford it. Thanks for watching another segment of My Two Cents with me, Ross Maria. If you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, subscribe, and follow me below. Comment, let me know what you think. If you've got any questions or your thoughts, feelings on Apple Pay and PayPass and, and where the world's going in terms of how we pay for things, let me know how you do it. Let me know your concerns. If you think it's a good idea, bad idea, whatever it is, let me know and we can have a chat about it there. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for next week's episode.